Hello, hello. Well, we're back again with another board repair this uh, this afternoon, actually. It's no longer morning. Uh, this day's gone by pretty fast, which is nice. Um, anyways, I have a board here that uh, I thought would be nice to make a little video on. Uh, it's something that I haven't seen yet before, um, so I thought it would be interesting just to do a little video on it and share it with you guys. Um, the type of board it is, is a 820-3115 board. It's a 2012 13-inch uh, PowerBook, 13-inch MacBook Pro, excuse me. Um, and the issue is is that the uh, Bluetooth, uh, I've actually got it down here on my desk, but the Bluetooth um, is not working. The Wi-Fi is working fine. And I thought it was going to be something easy like replacing the uh, wireless card, which typically that's what it is. It's, if it's not the wireless card, then it's the, uh, the flex cable that goes from the uh, airport card or the wireless card to the logic board. Um, and uh, replace both of those and it's still getting no Wi-Fi. Now, I, I got it booted up right here on my desk. I'll just show you. Um, let me see if I can zoom in where it says no Wi-Fi. Yeah, so that symbol right there um, is your Bluetooth. It's not supposed to have that squiggly line through it. Uh, when it has that, that means, I'll go over there and just click on it. It says Bluetooth not available. Um, sometimes it will, it will say like um, hardware, like if it's in the Wi-Fi area and your Wi-Fi is not working, and it'll say Wi-Fi um, hardware not found or no hardware. Um, but the Bluetooth, even after replacing the, the wireless card and uh, the flex cable, is still getting no Bluetooth. Um, still not available. So, um, just looking at the schematics here, um, I'll, I'll, I'll show you what I'm looking at. I have the board here. Um, this is the port right here where your wireless uh, flex cable plugs in. It runs from the wireless card to the board uh, into this port here. And so um, let me pull up the schematics for you. So you can see there um, we have uh, this, here's the, the J3501, that's that connector I just showed you. Um, and this goes to your airport card, it goes uh, to your Bluetooth um, as well. And that's the two functions that it works. Um, the airport is working fine. There's no problem with the airport. And the reason it wasn't picking up any uh, signal um, when I showed you earlier, when I clicked on the Wi-Fi, is because I don't have the antennas plugged in. Um, that doesn't matter. Um, if you don't have the antennas plugged in, you still have hardware that's recognized. Um, and we don't have Bluetooth recognized still. It's still saying not available, which if it worked and you didn't have the airports or the, the Wi-Fi antennas plugged in, it would just not be picking up any signal. It would it would show a list of here's your um, applications that have Bluetooth, uh, but uh, there would be no signal in them. Just kind of like it was doing the Wi-Fi. There's no um, routers that it's picking up. But um, so we have the Wi-Fi working, but not the Bluetooth. So back over here to the schematic, uh, you see the airport goes here, but the Bluetooth runs um, over and through this U3510, uh, which is a critical component. Um, so, and, and it looks like that's a QFN uh, chip. That's just the design type. So, um, we're going to move over here to the board view. That's U3510. And I have the board here. And you, as you remember, let's see. So here's what the board looks like. You can see it matches the picture there. Right here is the uh, component. And I have it highlighted there with my mouse. That's the. Um, component for um, uh, for the, the wireless card. So uh, let's zoom in on that. And uh, we're also going to search for that U3510. Um, so I'm just going to do a quick search for that U3510. And that is located right there close to um, the component, or close to the, uh, the port. And uh, this part right here, it functions, uh, see BT, BT, USB, BT, that's all Bluetooth. So it looks like this is only um, functioning your Bluetooth and no other part, and Bluetooth MUX. Okay, so just what I'm going to try is try replacing that part and uh, see if we get a, can get a working Bluetooth on this. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn off this board and uh, put it under the microscope and we'll look at it and see if we first of all see any damage to that chip um, and just see what we get. 
So let me move over to the microscope. My microscope's not on. Give me one moment. I'll have to figure out why. What did I unplug? That is keeping my microscope from powering on. Let's see. Please tell me we have a microscope. There we go. Okay. That was unexpected. All right. So we're going to look at this board under the microscope. All right. Let me get you in focus. All right. So. Here we go. Um, let's try this view. Okay. So here we have our um, connector, and on the board view, uh, there is the connector. And so this component right here is the one that we have highlighted on the board view there. And this is our Bluetooth. This functions, or this operates the Bluetooth. So I'm just going to try replacing that chip and uh, see what we get. It doesn't look like there's, uh, just a moment, I'll get you in focus. It doesn't look like there's any damage um, to that chip that I can see. Um, oh wait, I see something. Do you see what I see? This is gonna be an easy fix. All right, so right here, there is supposed to be, what? What is that supposed to be? That is supposed to be, it's this part right here, a resistor um, for the Bluetooth MUX, um, PM Sleep S4L. Um, okay, so uh, we have that component missing. Isn't it nice to uh, check everything over before you go and replace parts? Um, anyways, uh, that part does lead to your MUX chip. Um, so we weren't wrong in thinking that this part was bad, possibly. However, just by using our eyeballs, we were able to figure out um, we have a component missing. Um, so, hey, easy fix. Let's, let's go ahead and get that replaced. Uh, let's look at the donor board. And, yeah, Oops. so right here we have a resistor on this board. So we're going to pull that resistor, and we are going to move it over to our customer's board. Easy peasy. All right, let me get some uh, captain tape, because we are going to have to cover up uh, this uh, port. Um, this is our donor board, so I'm not super concerned about um, damaging it. So I'm just going to put a little tape over I'm not going to aim the hot air at it, you know, to, to mess it up or anything. I'm actually going to aim the air probably uh, that direction. So let's go ahead and do that and pull that part. And what I'm going to do, I have a little cap here. Um, what I'm going to do, I usually put screws in this, but I'm going to take that resistor off and just place it inside this cap so I don't lose it. Uh, just an idea to do. in there. Okay. Make sure I have it in there. 
and I do. There it is. Okay. Now we're going to go to our customer's board. And I just threw away that piece of captain tape, which I didn't have to. Let's put a new piece on this port. And what I'm going to do first is put some um, flux on the um, pads and put some new solder there. A little bit of flux, or a lot of bit of flux. Take our soldering iron and solder, and we're going to just touch up those two pads. We got plenty of solder on those two pads. Can you see that? Let me go to the full microscope view. Okay. And now we're going to take that little resistor. Come here, little resistor. I'll flip you over. Doesn't really matter which side is up. Just kind of look at the, I like it to look nice. Okay. So place it there for now. Now I'm going to position the board in a way that is easy for me to work on it here. Okay. So now I'm going to get my better tweezers more trusty ones. Okay, and I'm going to make sure that I have a good hold on this resistor because once you heat it, the solder on the ends of it starts to melt. There we go. There we go. Ah, get back on there. Okay, I think we are good. Yeah. So we're in position. And now let's just take a little bit of alcohol and mark it by the cloth. And wipe that area up. Just like that. And it looks like we have the end of that old resistor, that little piece that I just pushed off that pad. That's the end to the old resistor that was torn. It was this was left on the pad right there. So when I put the solder down, it removed that. So it's good to get that off. All right. So now we are good on that, and I I do believe this is going to fix it personally. So I mean, only makes sense. I got all the flux off. Some mm -hmm. hot air to dry it up. Okay, now let's get back over to our camera view, and I'm going to put this um, back into our little test bench. Plug in our wireless card. Plug in our trackpad. And the reason why I plug in the trackpad in this model uh, and in the 15 model, but it seems to affect this model a lot more. With, if you don't have the trackpad plugged in, your machine runs super slow because there's actually a temperature sensor on this flex cable. Um, and so when it's registering that it's not seeing that uh, temperature sensor, the fans boost up high speed, the CPU over, uh, gets over run um, and it's like using like 90% of your CPU um, so it just takes forever to load so I'm gonna plug in that trackpad just to make sure that you know it boots a lot faster plug in our fan get our keyboard all 
Alright, and I'm gonna let this boot. Hold down the option key. So we can boot from our test drive. Let this boot. While we're waiting for this to boot, I can just show you the, uh, the board view again. Um, so we had uh, this component here, R3519, and so back over on the schematics, R3519 is right there. So this is for your PM Sleep S4L, that's like a power state. Um, it's going in, and that goes, uh, let's see, it's going in and into your MUX chip, but it's also going, um, looks like it's going up here to the Bluetooth power, your S2, looks like. Um, not exactly sure what it does, honestly. Um, I just know it was missing, and it was keeping the Bluetooth from working. So, all right, get back over here to the uh, camera and take a look at what we have now for the Bluetooth. We don't have a line through it anymore, uh, so our Bluetooth is working good. Uh, we have fixed the problem. So what did we learn from this? Um, we learned that you know it's good to get an idea, possibly, by looking at the schematics, looking at your board view, get an idea of what it might be. Um, and we were able to just look under the microscope really quick uh, use our eyes and we found hey there's a missing resistor um, and that was the problem uh, we replaced that resistor really easy fix and uh, we got this customer's board back up and running so their Bluetooth is good their Wi-Fi is good um, everything's working great so um, hope you enjoyed this video hope you learned something too I did so have a nice day we'll see you next time